So Aaron, when your wife loves rum finished rye and you own your own brand of whiskey. I was going to say, we're doing another one of your own bourbon? Yeah, yeah. But All my right. wife loves rum finished rye. Yeah, I do too. And we needed a special project, so guess what we did? You did a rum finished rye. Y'all want to find out whether or not it's worth it? Then stick around. Yeah, I do. So I knew you were doing an eight year, but I had no clue that this was coming up until I got here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, basically, uh, back at the end of 2022, we uh, Kate, we decided we were going to do a finishing project, uh -huh. and the parameters were this: I had to find rum barrels, I had to be able to buy a small number of them to run a test, because if you don't know this. Buying barrels from a new source is dangerous because you can put valuable whiskey in it and ruin it. Sure. So I had to do a small number. Mm -hmm. Then, after we ran the test, I needed to be able to go back to that same source and buy a large number from the same supplier. And that is a hard uh, combination of things to find. And so I ended up getting barrels from multiple different producers. Mm -hmm to make sure that we didn't have all our eggs in one basket. Okay. And it took a long time to get the distillery to make it a priority to put the whiskey in the barrels. Uh, but the barrel, the I believe that they went in the barrels on January the 18th in 2020. So can you disclose who the barrels were from? Um, I would if I knew. Oh, you don't know. Uh, okay. But my barrel supplier uh, would only tell me what region it was from. They would not tell me who the producer was. And this is from the Caribbean. From the Caribbean, yeah. Um, and so, uh, not a lack of disclosure, I would tell you if I could. I will tell you that there are three barrels from Gregarious Grump. Okay. Um, the, the bottlings of their rums, we happen to have some of their barrels left over, so we use those. And also, uh, in this saga, this was the most stressful whiskey thing I think I've ever had to deal with. Because after four months in the barrel, I asked for samples. Was Lindsay the master taster? Uh, I, I We'll get to that part. Okay. Yes, yeah, she was integral in approving this batch. Got it. And so, so I asked for samples. The distillery told me no. They said they didn't have time to do it, and there was no way that they were ready yet. And I said, fine. So then they said, oh, we actually did pull the samples. And I'm like, all right, get them to me. So I get them, and I taste what them. What happened there is Lindsay, and they, Lindsay got on the phone. They were them. terrible. Oh, maybe she didn't get on the phone. Un undrinkable. Oh, bro, that sucks. Yeah, like so bad that after I tasted it, I made a cocktail, and all I could taste was this terrible potting soil. Not food. even good for cocktail whiskey. No, no. And so then I was like, I need to reset my palate. Potting soil with you is not good either. That's what killed GTS for you this Yeah, year. yeah, uh, which I think is TCA. I think it's, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in not another THC. video. THC. TCA. TCA. Yeah. Uh, oh, from the cork. Cork, yeah. Um, I found out whiskey can be corked. We got a video coming out. Don't okay, worry about it. Yeah, Anyways. Never mind. So then I came upstairs and I drank Benchmark Full Proof because I'm so familiar with that. I yeah. thought I could reset my palate. Okay. Still couldn't. All yeah. I taste is body soil. So I reached out to the distillery and I said, hey, we got problems. Every one of the barrel samples she sent me is tainted and it's undrinkable. We cannot use it. Yeah. And I said, I, I know y'all are busy. You got to pull samples from everything right now and taste it. Okay? Yeah. And so they pull samples from all of the barrels and they sit down and do a tasting and they reach back out to me the head distiller, the assistant distiller, and uh, Mike, who runs the tasting room and is a brand rep for us, all tasted it, and they all reported that all the barrels were unusable. Wow. And so the distillery is, like, super upset. For sure. Because this was a large investment to just have it all go to waste. Yeah. And so I'm laying there in bed, and I'm thinking, how on earth could this happen? I had barrels from five different producers. Why do all of the barrels all taste the same way? Mm -hmm. This isn't from the barrel. This has to be a processing error. Yeah. And so I start asking all these questions. Everyone's pointing fingers. And then it dawns on me. You couldn't even drink Benchmark Foolproof without tasting that flavor sure. after it had been on your palate. What if every time people are tasting these, their, tap, their palate gets tainted and they think everything tastes bad? I keep saying taint. Yeah. It's called cork tape. Choose a different word. I'm sorry. It's called cork tape. I don't know what else to call it. So 
I make them give me samples of all the barrels. Yeah. I check the spreadsheet to see what the barrel source was. Mm -hmm. I remove... All, oh, another thing I found out. The four samples they sent me were all from one barrel source. Mm. And so once I pulled that barrel source out, I tasted all the other barrels, and they were just fine. Golden. Okay. And so I, I did a, my own blend here at the house, equal parts from each barrel. I called so was, Lindsay up. Was the bung... Was the bung... Is that the right word? Is it not? Was it cork? It turns out, uh, no. Uh, but it turns out you can get cork tank from other species of wood besides cork. I'm sorry. Um, you can also get it from um, from pine. Yeah. And sometimes the pallets that they move uh, yeah. barrels around are made out of pine. Yeah. We're going to do a whole video on this. So I call Lindsay up and I, I won't tell her anything. I just handed her the glass. I said, taste this and tell me what you think. And she's like, oh, that's really good. And I was like, oh, thank God. Yeah. Right? And so I tell them to bottle it, but it ages for four more months in the rum barrels after the samples were pulled before they were dumped. And I also did my blend equal parts, but when you dump barrels, that's not what you get. Sure. So I had no idea what this was going to taste like until the morning of the event. And I rush in and I taste it. And? And I was very excited. All right, well, let's nose it up and taste it up. I can tell you right now, off the nose, like I want one of those Honey, I Shrunk the Kid guns, you know what I mean? And I just want to get shrunk and just jump in. <laughs> That's, I, I like I that. I mean, it smells heavenly. So let, let's run through the stats. The distillery is Giant Texas Distillers. The release is Prideful Goat Rum Finished Caribbean Rye. The age is mm -hmm. non-age stated, but I can tell you that these barrels aged uh, for Five years in uh, MGP, one year in Houston in the original barrel, and uh, w almost a full year in the rum barrel. So uh, according to old TTB um, interpretation, it is a six-year-old. According to new, it is a seven-year-old because now oh. you can add the uh, finishing time to okay. your total length. Um, the proof is 115.8. Uh, cash strength, non-chill filtered. SRP is only 78.99. Wow, I'm gonna and I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm I'm, I'm kind of mad right now because okay. you told me that there's I can't have one unless I buy it. Uh, <laughs> there's gonna be plenty for you to okay, get here in Texas. That yeah. is um, very very good. That is a pleaser. And it is a 750 Holy ml bottle. Holy crap! Okay, so let's talk about tasting notes. Man. It is super complex. It is complex, and you normally, know what I get a little bit of. When I think Angel's Envy, I'm sorry, when I think, well, spoiler alert, <laughs> when I think rum finished rye. You, you think Angel's Envy. And I hate Angel's Envy rye. I, I hate Angel's Envy. Uh, everything, that, all of their normal, the, you know, but the the, the, the store picks, it, it, fantastic. But yeah. this is nowhere even close to that. No, no, this is very, very different for a finishing project because some of the time the finishing projects are so subtle you can't even tell that they're finished. It like maybe added a fruit mm. note or something. Some of the time, um, it's so over the top Man. that you're like, I don't even know what I'm drinking. I right? feel like I'm back at grandma's house, just like diving into like the Werther's Originals. You know what I get? A, a, yes, there's a ton of butterscotch. A lot of butterscotch. But there, you know what I get that's really interesting is a hint of uh, like uh, lychee or lychee, ruby red grapefruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like just just a hint of that. I, I mean, it's if you dig down, I could see that maybe I'm getting one. Yeah, I get a lot of butterscotch though. A lot of butterscotch. But it's like butterscotch. It's like I was chewing some double mint gum, and then I saw Grandma's bowl of Werther's, and I was like, "Ooh, I want that." Yeah, and mix the two. And, and now I'm like, "Oh, okay." And, and I've never done that. Maybe I want to do that now because this is what the, this is fantastic. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, there is the, the, the clove note. There is the spearmint note. Um, and I also get, and this is a little bit weird, and I think it's from the rum uh, barrels, I get like a blueberry muffin. So on the palate, is that what you're talking about, the palate or the yeah, nose? Yeah, the palate, yeah. Okay. We yeah. kind of skipped the nose. You were already drinking. Well, no, that was the nose I was mm. talking about. Okay. The, I... the Werther's. Werther's, okay. Uh, I am getting some like blueberry... It's in. This sounds crazy, but it's almost like one of those like blueberry with a little bit of lemon zest on the top. Oh yeah, 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 um, yeah. Yeah, this is a really complex. Um, and what's the proof? One fifteen is that one fifteen point eight. 
Okay. Yeah, it's it's definitely got enough body to stand up to everything that's going on. And uh, due to the difficulty, I have no plans to ever do this again. <laughs> <laughs> and there's 225 cases total for everywhere. So uh, if you see the chance to get it, you should pick one up. So $78.99. Even though the... I mean, we, we, we reviewed the other one, the 8-year-old. Mm -hmm. I don't get as much barrel char... On this, as I did the eight-year-old, and maybe that is was the that's all. The eight-year-old, the eight-year-old eight had two extra years in the original barrel in Texas. In Texas, and this this was in rum barrels in Texas. It was in uh, it was its there, original yeah. barrel for one year in Texas, and then the rum barrel for, which, for which, one year. Which are used, so you're not yeah. getting yoke char off. Yeah. Okay, so that's why. Yeah. Um, this is much sweeter. This is a dessert wine type it's delicious whiskey, right like this is what you drink after dinner yeah this is fantastic yeah uh i drink before dinner i can't stay out of the bottle i i, I just well hopefully you have enough left to give some that's away. all like that's all i have left i had to give me media samples away right. so uh many of uh, my fellow youtubers were sent uh bottles for them to review so hopefully you'll see some reviews some yeah reviews. i'm i'm very impressed by uh honestly randy I, i've been impressed by every uh prideful goat that has come out so uh kudos to you guys uh, i think you guys are doing a fantastic job uh, they're all really really good so so if someone asked me that's such an interesting thing for me to focus attention on someone asked me do you like the eight year or the rum finish more mm. and i given the uh, uh, the all of the accolades that sagamore eight year got last year yeah and what we did to the prideful goat eight year um to make it different I would be shocked if it didn't also get a lot of accolades. I think I think that a lot of people are going to love good. the eight year. But of everything that we've ever released from the Prideful Goat, this is your favorite. Probably, but here's why: this is the only thing that I had anything to do with what it tasted like. Oh, okay. Right, like I literally have an email that that has a spreadsheet of all of the barrel numbers that after I tasted those barrels, I wanted those in this blend. Yeah. I was the one that bought these barrels and sourced them. I was the one that tasted what they tasted like. I was the one that said, put these together. And so as a whiskey lover, it's amazing to get to be involved in your own brand. And you know where, who makes good whiskey and you know at what age it's good and you know what to bottle and what not to bottle, right? But to actually make decisions that influence its flavor, that is different for me in in what I have done in the past. So I'm very excited about this, well, and I hope I hope you love it as much as good. as I do. Also, really cool. Uh, you want to rate it up? Yeah, I mean, um, talking about the eight year versus this, I mean, I I, I feel like um, I don't even remember what I rated the eight year, but uh, I think you gave it a ninety three. Three was it that high? Yeah, uh, I'm in the nineties on this. Probably like a I love it, but. I think I like the eight year more only because um, it was a li little sweet. I mean, that's obviously sweet. Yeah, it's sweet. Yeah. It's sweet. Um, so I, I mean, I think I'm at like a ninety one. Okay, all right. Yeah. I'm gonna abstain from yeah, rating you you know, uh, because it's my brand. Uh, but uh, you buy a pass at seventy eight ninety nine. I mean, I'm gonna try to, f to find one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I uh, would advise that if this is the style of whiskey that you like. That you buy it and you buy it back up. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, I'm not. I'm not doing this again. No, it's it's very good. Um, it's again. It's I, I typically shy away from the rye, the rum finish rye, but because of Angel's Envy, right? It's so sweet. Uh, but this isn't that sweet. This is uh, this is very well balanced. So yeah, yeah I absolutely would buy one and, and and back it up too for that price. I like that. Okay, let's give some whiskey away. Um, and I have nothing to do with the brand, by the way. Nothing just to like, do. Just because I'm on yeah. the channel. Like, I, just get I literally said before we started recording, I hope you hate it. It'd be hilarious. Yeah. Um, no, I don't. I love it. Um, so uh, let's do uh, five one ounce samples. Wow. That's going to kill the bottle. It's going to kill it. It's I'm going to have to. Dry. Yeah. Well, we've got more coming. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, five one ounce samples. Uh, all you have to do to enter to win is like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell. Um, I am now warning people, do not comment to enter the giveaway. Only comment if you want to comment. We do want to hear... We want to hear from you. What you have to say. But we are getting overwhelmed with 
comments that are generic because they rise the best. Yeah. So, uh, so if you have something to say, say it, uh, but you don't have to comment to enter. Uh, and you do have to click the link in the video description, give us your information, run a randomizer, post the results, reach out to the winner, ship for free. Uh, if you enjoyed this content, you can support the channel by purchasing the Prideful Goat. You can join our Patreon. There's a link in the video description. Uh, I challenge you to go check out all of the benefits. I promise that you will not be disappointed. There's opportunities there that you can't find on your own. Uh, you can also support the channel by going to bourbonrealtalk.com and checking out our merch. We made things for you, the whiskey enthusiast. And so when you get over there, you're going to love what you see. And you can also show support by using me as your real estate agent. Uh, my real estate company has subsidized this channel for years, and I operate in the Dallas and Houston metro area. So if you need residential real estate services in either of those areas, please reach out. And Aaron deserves some love, too. Mm, and, thank you. And and tell them how they can support you. So I actually, Randy and I met, uh, I'm actually a lender, so... Uh... We meant that way. And if you're looking to purchase a house and need a loan, uh, I think my link is down below. I operate in Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado, and Florida. So I'd love to uh, be able to get a chance to earn your business. Awesome. And we end every broadcast the same way, and that's this. If you woke up this morning and you're unsure whether or not anyone loves you, just know that we love you. We'll see you next time on Bourbon Real Talk. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.